Hi guys, so back today with a long awaited late night crafting video. <clears throat> Excuse me. I um, am going to be showing you guys how I created my recipe pages for this last year. I've got pretty much everything prepped, um, so I guess let's go ahead and get started. So um, the first thing we'll do is we will construct the page. So I'm going to need um, two 8.5 by 11 sheets of cardstock. Mine are going to be out of black cardstock, and it's just recollection. Um, eight, uh, 60 pound and then you're going to need two lunch sacks and so with the lunch sacks what you're going to do is um, you're going to have to cut these off because these are going to be way too long so I'm going to cut mine at six and a quarter so six and a quarter by however wide they are. I can't remember how wide they are. Um, but once that's done, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and just seal that down. Seal that down. So it's been a really long time since I've done a late night crafting video. I've just been really busy and unfortunately haven't had much time to do them. Lots and lots of stuff has been happening. But now I'm like, it's kind of old news. <laughs> um, okay. So let's go ahead and glue that down. I've got most everything cut, I think. Um, all of the stuff that I did on the silhouette, I already have um, done because obviously that's going to be really hard to film. First it would be filming what I'm doing on the computer, um, and you guys don't need real time of that. So my bags are done. Okay. Oh, we're going to move a few things there. All right, we will move this out of the way for just a second, although we're going to bring it right back in. Well, not right. Um, so sometimes I like to do this with um, wet glue, and sometimes I like to do it with the ATG adhesive. Kind of depends on mood. All right, so the key to this is making sure that you have a little bit of space at the top. So I like to do about a quarter inch. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. It's not anything perfectly um, spaced out. So these are gonna go. And you'll notice that my bag, the gap is a little bit different, um, but that's because the bags aren't perfectly square. So I'm gonna line it up to this right side to the best of my ability. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on the same side of both of these because when I put them in, I do wanna make sure that the bags um, are in the same direction because this side of the bag is shorter than that side of the bag. So I just want to make sure that those line up correctly. And these are just like regular lunch sacks. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and just bring my brayer in and give it a nice good press right there. Okay. Um, this is where I'm actually going to use my wet glue for the edges. And I don't want to do about an inch. So these very, these edges we're going to do um, with wet glue. And normally I would do my dry adhesive before I do the wet. So, um, but I do want to continue the dry adhesive along this very edge. 
too much wet glue and um, your paper will warp. So in all reality, you guys, I should have done my dry adhesive before I did the um, the wet because I've got wet glue on there now. Thankfully, it's rubber and it'll wipe off fairly easily. Okay. Right. So what's been going on? Been working a lot as usual. Um, oh, dang it. I want to be careful when I put this down because I want to make sure that I line up the, these edges really well. Um, so yeah, been working a lot as usual. I have been crafting. I've just been not really in the mood um, and also kind of in the state of mind to really do the late night crafting videos. Um, 2018 has been, oh geez, there goes, has definitely been a year. Um, so the beginning of the year was pretty good. Um, can't say I have many complaints to that. Um, and then, well, I guess like partially into the middle or of the beginning, the middle of the beginning of the year. Um, I, we started having some family stuff go on. Um, Jack's, they called him his uncle, um, but actually it was his mom's cousin. So, I don't even know like so that would be Jack's second cousin um, went through a surgical procedure uh, and um, unfortunately he didn't wake up from the procedure and then um, so he passed away and that was in mid-March so that was definitely a family um, definitely really sad um, just the, the loss was you know um, even though he was like you know not immediate family he came to like Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that kind of stuff so um, definitely his loss was felt quite a lot um, so Tom passed away mid-March and then, um, Jack's, actually it's his, um, his, uh, his only, like, cousin, um, Jesse passed away in April, in the beginning of April, and, um, Jesse has, uh, two young kids who, um, who are now they don't have their dad, um, but so Jesse passed away. He, um, had a heart condition that, um, no one even, like, no one really knew about. Um, he showed signs of it, but it wouldn't have been something that would have showed up unless they would have done, like, an EKG, um, while he was having an episode. And so, um, unfortunately, he had an episode and, um, he didn't make it. So that was, that was really sad. And, um, I've actually, I actually knew Jesse before I knew my husband. And, um, so that was a shock and it's, it was really a difficult time, um, on top of, you know, like I actually was having some family issues go on as well. Um, from my side, there's just, oh, 
so many different things going on. Um, so definitely a really rough start to the, the year. Um, so now it is September. So we're getting towards the end of the year and it is 2018 is a much is much better. However, still ready for this year to be over. Um, because as of recently, little monster, truly badger, has been um, sick. She's um, had some puking going on, and um, she coughs and. Yeah, she does this um, other thing. So we've been back and forth with her vet. Um, she has been on a round of antibiotics because they initially thought, because Blake was coughing too, they initially thought that maybe it was um, some kennel cough, um, which we thought was kind of weird because they are not really around other dogs uh, and the other, you know, or in public and the other dogs that they are around, those dogs aren't around like public and other dogs so it was kind of weird but we're like you know let's just be proactive to it and a little bit of antibiotics is gonna you know if it helps so it definitely helped Blake so we're thinking that that was his issue unfortunately truly has continued to cough um, and she is um, continuing to do um, like uh, vomiting sometimes after uh, eating. So that has been super tough. So first we did blood work and her blood work came back perfect. Uh, so going forward, they, um, they wanted to do an x-ray of her just to make sure that there wasn't anything stuck or, you know, anything like that. So did the x-ray, everything came back normal on that as well. Um, it showed a little bit of a narrowing spine and the way her doc, um, her doctor, <laughs> doctor, vet, whatever. Um, it's my dog's doctor. So the vet explained it to me is that she, it's like a, like a strained back. So because she has like a narrowing spine. Um, so what they recommended was to keep her, uh, from jumping, which I'm like, how do I keep her from jumping? She is like a little gazelle. Um, it's really hard to keep her you know, calm and not, you know, jumping up and that kind of stuff. So that has definitely been a challenge. Um, so that's kind of what they thought was stemming from maybe the, um, part of the issue. So, so we've been dealing with that. So she, also thought that maybe some of the vomiting is allergies or um, possibly a collapsing trachea. So right now the collapsing trachea isn't, um, it's, she's not diagnosed with it and it's not, um, what's what I'm looking for? Um, it's not the official diagnosis, but excuse me, it would, um, definitely, kind of explain more of what's been going on with her. So the doctor said that we could try some cough medicine, which helps kind of relieve that. Um, and also, um, obviously keep her calm. Um, and then if that doesn't help, then they need, you know, then we could go forward with, you know, doing more tests or, um, with a collapsing trachea, there is actually a surgery that can be done. And hopefully it doesn't progress to that, uh, but we're definitely exploring options. She's always kind of coughed since she was like a puppy. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking that that maybe is what it is. Um, so we just kind of have to wait and see. Um, also they were concerned that maybe she had allergies to a, um, to a protein she was eating. 
So uh, we've actually changed up her diet, uh, looking at different proteins like kangaroo. I know it sounds sounds a little strange, um, but there's a bunch of different proteins that um, you know she she uh, the vet recommended we try a protein that she wouldn't have been exposed to, and obviously kangaroo is not a normal protein in dog food, so um, now she's on a specialized. Uh, diet, which she seems to be responding to. I also think, um, and I know that <clears throat> it's not all this, but she's a little bit dramatic, and um, she might just be acting out because she has faked paw injuries before. So she'll like go and she'll act like she's limping and then she forgets and she's totally fine like within the span of like five minutes she'll she'll come in the house you know or you know she'll just come see me and she's like the one um one time she was limping and I was like oh no what's wrong and then within five minutes she was totally fine so she might have just dinged her um, her foot. I'm so sorry, you guys. I meant to um, put this on. Um, and then it was fine, but I, I don't know. Like, she's a little bit dramatic, so it would not surprise me if some of this is um, a little bit um, for show. I think, um, so the hubby He's been on first shift for a long time, um, and he's actually done second shift before, and then they, his work decided um, to not do second shift again, or, you know, so everyone back went back to first shift. Well, then they decided they were going to do second shift again and make him a lead. So then, um, it's just been really unseasonably hot here uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So then um, he has now back, gone back to first shift. So I think some of that upheaval also was affecting her. Um, so I, I don't know. Who knows uh, with dogs? It just, it's one of those things that I don't know. I don't know. Um, so now my page is completed as far as the papering goes and so the construction and then the paper is on as well so the next thing I want to do so that they start drawing is I'm gonna do my little gingerbread border so I have little gingerbreads already cut and I just want to make sure that I'm okay red blue and yellow so red blue and well gold and then um, pearls for the eyes so let's go ahead and it has been a hot minute since I did this so hopefully I don't goob it all up so I just want to do this now so it starts drying because it does take a minute and as I'm doing the construction I don't want to do it and they're not dry and I should actually do it this way because being left-handed, it definitely, I will put my hand in something and ruin my project. Been there and done that. Oh yeah, so that was kind of the other thing that happened is um, hubby was on second shift and he's just now come back to first shift which is nice because then I get to see him more because I do I do kind of like him okay. um, work has just been crazy. Um, we were looking for a couple new nurses. We found them and everything has been going great. And then one of our nurses who's been with us for a while uh, got 
all of a sudden she had to go to the hospital um, for a foot injury that um, with a tendon. So she um, she finally saw the her specialist, and <clears throat> now they're saying it's not a tear. So now it's kind of back to square one. Um, so she's she was out, and then our new nurse who has um, been a lifesaver when um, our you know like basically our normal nurse. So. One of our nurses was on vacation as well when all of this was going on. Um, she only she only works. She um, like eight months out of the year. Uh, so she actually was on vacation. So yeah, it's just been a little crazy. Um, but anyway, so the new nurse who is lovely, I love her too she's been awesome just stepping up stepping in um filling filling in um one morning was supposed to come in and she calls and says um she has to go to the walk-in she's got racing heart and um but she's sure that she'll be okay and um she'll be there as soon as she can get there Oh my goodness. Get a call from her about 30 minutes later saying that the clinic, the walk-in, is sending her to the ER by ambulance um, because they did an EKG and um, it was an abnormal EKG. Um, so they're not sure what was going on, but she needed to go to the hospital. And, um, so that was scary. Um, so we were waiting all, you know, afternoon, to, you know, that to make sure she was okay. Um, and she was okay. Uh, they don't know what caused it. And she's following up with her, uh, primary and, you know, specialist and everything like that because, when she got to the um, the emergency room, um, oh my goodness, that is a rather large blob of glitter. Um, oh my gosh. I'm making a mess. This is what I was afraid of, you guys. Oh, Lord. Um, so, anyway, she got to the hospital. They did another EKG and um, came back fine. So, there, what we're thinking um, is that there must have been something wrong with the leads at the clinic, which is scary. But, um, anyway, so she's following up just to make sure, um, that everything is, is okay. Um, and so far she's, oh my gosh, she's doing okay too. Um, and the other nurse hopefully will be back with us soon. They did not say that she needed surgery because when she went, um, they said it wasn't a tear. So we're not sure what's going on. Um, it could maybe just be some nerve damage. I don't know how it happened, um, but there's that. So Hello. hi, monster. What are you doing? Hi. Hey there. Oh, 
Okay. So, someone, okay, let's not get your paws in this, the, the glitter. Hi. Hi. Well, see, she's doing okay. You want to come down? Okay. All right. You just want to sit behind me? Hi, buddy. Hi. Um... My new neighbors um, has a son, and um, he's he's a nice little kid. But um, my dogs aren't used to having kids next door, and so they tend to bark at him. And he might be out back right now, and that's they see him out there and they want to go out and yell. They also um, have a dog, and he is another little chihuahua and he's come over to play a couple of times Blake I think has the macho mas macho thing going on with him and truly is fixed now so that is a benefit um, but she is still very sassy she and that's the other thing is kind of all this stuff definitely increased um, after she was spayed so it's it's um I don't know how <laughs> but I was worried that um, you know the surgery caught you know like something you know I don't know I was just kind of worried and freaking out that they left something inside of her um, because sometimes she will just be laying there and she will do, like she'll just cry out uh, like she's hurt, like she's sleeping, like dead sleep, and then she'll just cry out. Um, so that's been kind of one of the reasons why it's been, well, one of the many reasons why it's been so worrisome because we don't know why she would just randomly cry out. And once these are dry, um, I'm going to ink the edges. So, okay. All right, these are all set. So I'm going to actually just them out of the way to dry. They'll dry and then when I'm ready to put them together I can do that. Alright so next thing is all of my little pieces. So what I did was I printed them out and then I cut them all out with my silhouette and I also um, did shadows, I did, or offsets, I think that's what I'm looking for, is offsets. That's been work. Oh, interesting work story. Oh my gosh. I have never, I guess, personally experienced something like this before. And so it was very shocking to me that a person would be like this. So 
we train people to take care of other people. And that is not an easy career to go into. It definitely is not for everyone. You have to be patient and understanding and you need to be tolerant. And I recently had an experience with a student who was none of those things. Um, she, obviously I won't say any names um, for privacy reasons, um, she was a student who had previous experience, which scares me even more because um, of the whole situation. So when the student came in, everything was going fine, and one evening, um, one of the gentlemen in the class came up to me and was just clarifying a couple of things. Now, let me just say, he yes, he is um, English second language, uh, and that's not a problem. Um, his English is very good. He's good at communicating. His He does have kind of a thick accent, and so sometimes, you know, we do need to remind him to slow down and, um, you know, or ask him to repeat something every now and then, but it's not, you know, the end of the world. It's, you know, his communication is still... Uh, easy. Um, so one evening, this young gentleman uh, on class was dismissed, and he stopped at my desk on the way out to ask me, uh, just verify if he had any payment um, left, and um, just verify about you know CPR and, and that kind of stuff. So as I was explaining to him, he just um, he wasn't understanding quite as much. Um, he was. A, he was late on the first day of class when we kind of go over again uh, the signups for the background check and transfer belt and TB testing and um, the CPR. So he, uh, he, it was explained to him, but he just was just clarifying, making sure what he had signed up for and just, you know, making sure that the amount of the payment he needed to bring in, blah, 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 blah. So as I'm speaking with him, this other student comes up and I can see her getting agitated. So we're sitting there and she's kind of sitting off to the side uh, and she's huffing and she's kind of puffing and I can, you know, uh, so I can hear her and she's like, I hear her go, come on, you know, and she's just getting agitated. Um, and I can see her like her, her posture is changing. She's like, you know, crossing her arm. She's like, she's just acting agitated. Um, and I can see her roll her eyes, you know, when he asks another question, because I just, you know, it just caught my attention. So I looked over and I saw her do this and I was like, mm, no. So I stopped what I was doing, talking to the young man. And I said to her, and I used her name. Obviously, I said, I'm, I'm going to need you to calm down. Um, this is not appropriate behavior. Uh, this student was here first, uh, and there's actually another student ahead of you, so you're going to have to wait to speak to me um, about whatever it is that you need uh, until these conversations are completed. Because it just, it irritates me. Um, so that was kind of like the first kind of just odd experience like I've, I've never had an experience like that with a student um, just so blatantly getting um, upset and irritated uh, by having to wait or someone asking questions and that really didn't sit well with me because if you're going to act that way when you know you're in front of people and um you know, people can see what you're doing and, and see your actions, if they're appropriate or inappropriate. How are you going to act behind a closed door? You know, are you going to treat the different residents roughly? Are you going to respect them if you don't understand them right away? You know, like what, like what is, what is going to happen behind a closed door? That's always a big concern of mine um, because, you know, that not all residents can communicate 
and say, hey, I, you know, there are some of them um, can't speak, you know, and obviously then can't speak up for themselves. Anyway, so that was kind of my first, like, uh, something's not right. So I did talk with um, my mother-in-law, who is also my boss. If you guys are just joining us for this first round, um, she is also my boss. Um, so I did speak with her, and she said, yes, that's not, that's not appropriate. Um, we do need to watch her. And, um, yeah, so that was the first incident. Then there was another incident where the instructor is going through and she is teaching skills and she had, she had stopped to, you know, ask if anyone had any questions or, uh, anything like that. And this student goes, uh, just move on to the next, you know, just move on to the next skill. Just a very, uh, and I was like, wow, you know, in, in 11 years, I've never, never had a student do that to an instructor. Um, so that was kind of the second strange behavior. So she was on very thin ice. Not to mention that this particular student was also not passing the theory portion of the class um, because she had either not, she had not passed the tests, the, the, the closed book tests, um, and it wasn't a miserable failure. We um, do hold our students to an 80% pass rate, so they need to be getting 80% on the tests in order to um, be considered passing the theory portion. Um, so she was, I think, what was it? Gosh, it was like, like, 75, like 69 and 75 percent. So she wasn't super far off. It wasn't passing. Um, so she, there was that. But then she also um, did really poorly on the closed book assignment. Now we have an assignment that is worth one third of their theory grade. So it's big. So they are matching take home assignments. So we give it to them and we say, okay, bring it back tomorrow and they are supposed to turn it in. Now, they can use their books. So it is open book, which when students don't do well on that, it always kind of blows me away because I'm like, you can use your book to get all the answers that you need. And um, she, I don't know if she was using, I don't know exactly what was going on. Um, but anyway, she got like a 25%, a 35%, a 76%, and like an 18%. I was like, wow. You know, like even if you're just guessing numbers and not using your book, you know, common sense would probably get you pretty close. But anyway, so... I, I, I don't know if those numbers are exactly correct, but it was to the point where she had like a 46% on that assignment. And so she had to get like a 100% and a 97% on the tests uh, in order to pass the theory portion of the class. And so that was discussed with her and she was set to retest So that was all set up in one evening. And then the next day they came back and they're going into the open lab time. And it was by total fluke that this happened. But um, she got partnered with the gentleman that she was like huffing and puffing about the other evening. So a couple days before. So... The instructor is getting students ready 
to start the lab, so they're just doing the explanation, and the partner list is up, and one of the students asks the instructor a question, and so she's answering that question, and she heard from another part of the classroom, you've got to be kidding me. And it kind of caught her off guard, so she just kind of glanced over and uh, in the general direction of the comment, and it was the trouble, I'll just call her the troublemaking student, um, over by the partner list. And so the instructor thought that that was kind of odd, um, but she was answering questions, so she didn't really get a chance to kind of be like, you know, what's going on. Um, she wanted to finish addressing the question from the other student, and then she was going to go um, get, you know, figure out what, what had happened. Um, so... Um, so she heard that, and then um, I had a, um, had scheduled a couple of students to, um, from previous classes to come in and just uh, practice before they take their state exam, because that's just one of the things that we do. So uh, I was actually standing over by the office, and I was um, speaking with those students, and all of a sudden, I hear the front door close. And I look at the front door, and then I look at the windows because we have large windows in the front. And um, well, I look, and there goes this student walking past the front window, like all outside, like she had just walked out of class. Um, so she found out that who her partner was, didn't like it, and walked out of class. So she's, ooh, that landed just right. Um, so she is not welcome back in the class for that particular incident because we don't tolerate that kind of stuff. That's just, that's not okay, you know. And, you know, it was discussed. She actually has a counselor. Um, and it was discussed with her counselor that, you know, that's not appropriate behavior, you know, and brought up to her counselor that, you know, if that's how she's going to act in public, what is she going to do if a resident is unpleasant to her or she doesn't like a resident, you know, like, like I said, some of them are nonverbal and, you know, that's just not appropriate. And I just realized, uh oh. I don't need to. <laughs> I thought I needed four trees, but I only need two trees. Okay, um, so there was that whole debacle. Um, I'm glad she's gone because that's just horrible. And um, I don't know that the, the young gentleman knew that she was being like that towards him. I don't know if, because, you know. Or he just kind of shook it off or whatever. He's a really, really nice young man. And um, he's struggling a little bit with the testing too, but we're working with him through it. But he, um, yeah, he, he actually has never said anything about either incident um, to anyone at the school. But I hope that... He knows that that type of behavior is not tolerated um, by us because even if she wouldn't have walked out of class there would have been um, an issue with her continuing uh, because of that response that she had so um, that you know like I said that's just not appropriate so that's the exciting news. Um, let's see. Um, what else on the work front? Um, the parking lot, the parking saga still continues. Um, we actually got a new neighbor and um, they do like permanent makeup and, you know, um, eyelash extensions and stuff like that. Uh, and 
The moving in process with them was a little rough <laughs> to begin with, um, but thought everything was kind of, you know, on the um, on the upswing where, you know, everything was going to be, you know, we could all, co you know, cohabitate together. Um, and then they started parking like jerks. And um, the way that our parking lot is, how they were parking, if they park, I can't leave, there's a, a slope at the entrance of the parking lot. And my dear hubby put new suspension on my car, which also lowered it. And um, by doing that, I can't just pull out. I need to um, pull out at an angle or I'm going to lose my oil pan. And the way that our new neighbors were parking uh, does not allow me to do that. And so <laughs> there's been a little bit of that, um, that drama there. Um, but it's, I think it's, I think it's resolved now. I think, um, they, they haven't been parking at the entrance. So hopefully, fingers crossed, don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. So these little flourishes, um, were also a cut that I had on the silhouette. And I'm pretty much just using them for the greenery. I, I'm going to put different flowers on top of them. Because uh, the ones that I, I um, had initially, uh, or the ones that actually go with this cut, I, I didn't like them as much. After I cut them, they just, I didn't like the, the look. So I'm going to put different poinsettias on top of it. So, okay. so I'd never watched The Office, you guys, and I finally decided to watch The Office, and it was hilarious. I can't believe that I waited so long to watch The Office. Um, I basically, I binge watched it. So that was quite a bit of my, my life. And um, it is so funny. Oh my gosh. It was hilarious. I'd seen parts of it, but I'd never watched the entire show. Um, so, but yeah, I just, I watched that. And... Still not watching any, any new series. <laughs> Still watching my NCIS, my um, white collar, and um, all those because I just like them and yeah. So actually, the one show. I watched while well, I was originally doing these pages because this is just the last one. Um, but the um, the show that I was uh, watching um, when I was doing the uh, the the other pages was. Um, it's a, it's a show called Schitt's Creek, and um, that. That. apparently I can't glue and talk at the same time very well. I'm going to have to stop soon, because I... 
just saw what time it is. And it is almost time for the monster's dinner. So I think I'm going to finish gluing these and then I will their dinner and then I'll be back to finish these. Just doing one is a lot faster than when I have to do, you know, when I did eight of them. So. Alright. Put that up there to dry. Alright, last not least. Some of these are so okay. So now I'm getting really quiet. It's towards the end of this doing, and I don't want to start another story time. Um, not that I really have that many stories, or good stories, or ones that I'm really following along as far as like. Um, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> as far as I'm telling, like, in any particular order. Okay. Right. That seemed to work a little bit better. Less smooshing. the first time. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, you guys, I will um, be right back. Um.